Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the new screensavers is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. The new screensavers is brought to you by Lighthouse. With 3D and AI, Lighthouse is the home security camera you just ask. And for a limited time until July 9th, get $100 off by going to www.light.house. That's light.house. And by WordPress. Reach more customers when you build your business website on WordPress.com. Plans start at just $4 a month. Get 15% off any new plan purchase at WordPress.com slash NSS. The first tablet running Chrome OS, a tiny touchscreen PC, and what's the hype with IGTV? Live from Twits Eastside Studios in beautiful Petaluma, it's the new screensavers! <laughs> And Penny, that's great. Penny is adorable. Welcome to the, there she is. Hello, Penny. Welcome to the new Screensavers episode number 163 for Saturday, June 30th, 2018. I am Leo Laporte on the right side of your screen. And I'm Ian Thompson on the left. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ian. How you doing? Good, good to see you again, mate. From the register.co.uk. You're rooting for England? Uh, Tuesday is going to be an interesting match. Yeah, it's going to be tight, but England I think, I think versus um, we've. Uh, I'm who? blanking. Good God, no! Uh, it's England versus someone who's probably going to beat us. Uh, it's, <laughs> no! It's, Don't say that. It's You've got, you got Harry. It's traditional at this point to lose on penalties. It's yes. what you do. You know? Oh, it's I know. That's just... the only bad thing. I'm excited. I like the World Cup. I watch it every. Four yeah, years. Columbia, of course. What was I thinking? And Columbia yeah. are a very strong team as well. Columbia. Oh. Um, yeah. So it could have been worse. But at the same time, it's been a, a joyful week. Germany's been knocked out, which is always good if you Wasn't British. that? That was something to see. Argentina lost 4 3. So now we've got a new <sighs> football chant. Chan, don't cry 4 3, four, three Argentina. Don't cry 4 <laughs> 3, Argentina. That is hysterical. And by the way, tell us who thought that up. Uh, this was the Falkland Islands, the official Twitter account for, for the Falkland Islands. And it's Which is like, British, Britain's outpost next door to Argentina. Indeed, but I want to find that, whoever wrote that and shake their hand because that was just a work of genius. This is um, my favorite uh, website. It's FIFA2018analytics.com because oh. I can never figure out who won, where, when, what's going on. And this is actually a really nice website that has all sorts of data points about uh, the World Cup. So now I know that France beat Argentina 4-3. to three. Don't cry 4-3, Argentina. That, uh, and then I can go see England and Colombia, 11 a.m., yep. July 2nd. Half our staff have, have taken the day off and will be in the pub watching that. It's going to be fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, let's see. What do we have here? We have coming up on this show. Ooh, do not drop this on your foot, okay? Yes. That's <laughs> review point number one. Look at this little baby. This is a little wedge of a computer called the Ockel. It was Indiegogo funded, actually, I think it's the fourth or fifth or maybe even sixth computer uh, funded by Indiegogo by this company. Why would you want it? What is it for? We'll talk about the Sirius A from Occol. And a very cool back it has too. But our audio guy, mm -hmm. Jason Howell, has reviews of four Bluetooth earphones at four different price points. Oh. All of them very different. And talking about new stuff, look at this. I don't even know how we got this. I don't think you're supposed to own this. This is the Acer Chromebook tablet, the first tablet. Hey, there's Leo Laporte. I know him. The first Chromebook tablet is aimed at education. Uh, we're going to have a first look because uh, we're going to let Jason Howell review this one when he gets in. And in, in Call for Help, we'll be answering one of the questions about email clients and oh. how to shift now that Microsoft's changed its software. Actually, I think this will be a fun occasion to talk about different email clients for different people. Hmm. Okay, so, so yeah, okay. maybe what you use, what I use, that kind of thing. Megan's going to take us in inside Instagram's newest app, IGTV, see if it's worth all the hype and why it's not 
for the olds. The olds, good grief, that makes I me like feel bad. I like it. Am I the olds? Well, <laughs> just this month, Quake One turned 21 years old. Uh, that made me feel really old. I feel <laughs> old now. Holy cow. And we've also got the questions in the mailbag, a couple of questions which you've sent in, and we've got some good answers for you there. First, the big stories of the week. California, I'm proud to say here we are in the state of California. Thursday night at the very last minute, mm -hmm. passed a very tough privacy law, essentially do you hear music? Yeah, it's the Octel, I think. Is it this? No. <laughs> Something's making music. I don't, I don't know where it's coming from. We're just going to have to live with it. Maybe this is the phone? I don't know. Not my laptop. <laughs> phone. It stopped. This is, by the way, one of the things I really <laughs> hate about Siri and Amazon's Echo and all these voice devices. I'm watching the World Cup this morning, mm -hmm. and we have a HomePod, the Apple HomePod. All of a sudden, and by we keep it fairly low, I hear mumbling in the corner. Siri's talking to me for something. I don't know what. <laughs> she got some command off the TV, and apparently it was a successful command because she was going on and on and on and on. Interesting. So I'm shouting like an idiot, hey, Siri, stop! Stop! Have you ever found yourself was, doing... Oh, you don't I, have No, I, I, don't, I refuse to have them in the home, no, I but I have why. heard that some TV advertisers are going to be putting out sonic sort of cues to home devices, and it's it is back. still going on, isn't it? <gasps> it's the Chromebook. Ah. Is it? I don't know what it is. It's not that. <laughs> I, feel, I, feel, I feel violated. And not in a good way. <laughs> What is it? It's coming from inside the house. <laughs> Let's check. It's not the phone, is it? It's very low. It's a kind of an angelic. Yes, yeah, it's a sort of music of the spheres. It must thing. be you. Nope. <laughs> okay, never mind. I'll even shut that down. Never mind. Padre SJ is in the chat room. Hello, Father Robert. Anyway, oh, Padre is there. Excellent. So, GDPR, I think, really was a landmark. The, yeah. The general data That's protection regulation. That's the gold regulation. standard. I think. European regulation now in effect. We've mm -hmm. already seen a lot of things. Although I note that uh, there have been stories about companies kind of dodging the law, not sure what really they're required to do. And since we haven't seen any enforcement action, just kind of, yeah. well, let's see what happens. What could possibly go wrong? I mean, the EU is going to leave a sort of cooling down period, if you like, where it can, you know, sort of companies can get themselves in order. Before Show it good faith, prosecuting. though, now, I yeah, think, instead exactly. of saying, well, let's wait till we get I mean, trouble. some publications just blocked all, all EU all EU traffic for a, for a week or so. Yeah, a lot of newspapers in the U.S. said, oh, yeah. screw it, we just don't want any EU readers. <laughs> so I don't, it'll be really interesting to see. Now, this California law was passed at the last moment. Oh, enormous shenanigans, yes. Had it not been passed by midnight Thursday, uh, there would have been a ballot measure in mm -hmm. the state of California, which would almost certainly have passed. Yep. Polls at least said so far that it was uh, very positive. And I, given how people feel about privacy, I think would have passed. Yeah, all the polling was suggesting it was going to pass. And I think state legislators were concerned, not that this was a stronger law. It wasn't particularly stronger. The law they passed was very similar. But mm -hmm. they would have no impact. Once it's passed as a ballot measure, the legislature has a hard time overruling it. Yeah, uh, this seemed to be the thing. I mean, it, it was the idea of a property developer who put, chucked a couple of million into, and he spent, you know, a couple of years crafting a really solid, good law which would be very difficult to beat in the courts. Right. Um, but, yeah, it comes back to what you were saying, in that if it goes through on the ballot, then the politicians lose a certain amount of control. They rushed it through within a couple of hours. It was on Jerry Brown's desk for signature, and that usually never happens that quick. No. And then, yeah, signed into law. So now... It'll be easier for lobbyists to gut the law, I think. But at the same time, there's popular support for it. It was polling really well and was probably going to pass. The guy who got it on, on the... It's very easy to get stuff on the ballot in California. Yeah, you only yeah. need a handful of... A few thousand signatures. But the guy who did it did agree, I will take it off the ballot mm -hmm. if you pass... If California State Legislature passes this, which they did. Right. Uh, which tells me that they're fairly comparable. Yeah. But I think he, he, there's always the threat. But if you weaken this... 
I can. I'll be. I'll see you in November. No, I know. I was going. There, there will be people who people want this. People genuinely, yeah, I think, now really get it. The data privacy is important. And now that California's done it, it's only a matter of time before the rest of the country probably. Well, I think it'll be chilly. Satan will go to work on a snowplow before it comes in some <laughs> states. But yes. It's... Did you read the article? Was it in Science? Where was the article that says his space is full of greasy dust? Not only that, it smells like mothballs. <laughs> It's got this image of an astronaut having to get out and the go Guardian. across the windscreen like that. Yeah. You know? They actually literally uh, would. That scientists in a some sort of weird outreach to normal human beings said it was a, about the equivalent of 40 trillion, trillion, trillion pounds of butter. Yep. Out there in space. <laughs> out there Not in space. Not the kind space. of butter you'd want to spread on your toast and marmite, <laughs> but yes. It's, uh, it's actually, Greece, it's not exactly right, but, mm. it, but it's, it's the carbon closest. Based. Yeah, yeah, it's carbon-based. And the odor is kind of interesting, too, although, I don't know, can you smell anything in space? I don't think you can. Uh, vacuum, it, no. It's if you tried get to, your nose would fall off. Uh, well, you'd probably pass out almost instantly. This and, and, then, and then explode. So, who cares what mm. it smells like, right? <laughs> there are also clouds of ethanol in space, which, I, you know, if you're a believer, then that's a clear sign that we're supposed to be drinking an awful lot more. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Somebody's not doing, not doing their share. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, ooh, well, we're going to talk a little bit about all these pocket computers. I brought a bunch of them, but there is a rumor that Microsoft is doing a pocketable surface. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we get closer. Yeah. Uh, the NSA, I think hmm. these are, these are, this just proves the NSA are nice people, the National <laughs> Security Agency. They're just going to delete a bunch of records, oh, like for hundreds one. of millions of records of your calls and mine. The NSA, this, this was a secret... Uh, uh, program that started after 9-11. George Bush, uh, mm. Bush authorized it. It was called Stellar Wind at the yes. time. And it collected, with the help of uh, phone companies like AT&T, metadata about phone calls and text messages sent in the United States. Not the contents, but who mm. was talking to whom. Everybody! Yeah. Everything! Uh, then, of course, you remember a few years ago, Edward Snowden blew the lid off of Stellar Wind. Indeed. So Congress said, well, we'll make the Freedom Act and we'll get it back in. <laughs> yeah. We'll get it going. But the Freedom Act has a natural sunset and there's a lot mm. of rules about it. And apparently they broke some of the rules. Yeah. I mean, it was... This is why the Snowden leaks were so valuable because, you know, we've been investigating stuff like this for years and every time it came up, you were told by... You know, told by government officials or NSA officials, no, 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 you're just paranoid. It's conspiracy theory stuff. 2011, I think it was, an ex-FBI director tried to get me thrown out of Black Hat because for suggesting that this sort of thing was going on. Really? Screamed at me for being really? unprofessional. And, and there was a, remember, Echelon? Yes. That was a joint venture, we thought, of the five GCHQ Nation, yeah. and the, uh, yeah, the Five Eyes, yeah. right? And uh, America would never admit it. But then the GCHQ blew it, and they admitted that Echelon existed. This was actually looking through everything for keywords, yeah, which is really a amazing kind of spy. And it was being used to spy on European country uh, companies and used for competitive advantage, as we found out in the State Department leaks, which were also around about the same time. So it was, you know, it's nice that they're complying with the law, but basically the whole result of the Snowden thing has been very little new in the way of new laws and those that are generally legalized what was going on at the first place anyway. anyway so, yeah. No great win. Comcast and the Google Home were out this week. Yeah. Briefly. The Google Home stopped working for a couple of hours. Uh, People had to use fingers to do things. I think it was Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday. I was trying to get it to do something. Because you know if you ask a Google Home, if you say something like, hey, do we have a Google Home anywhere I could try this with? Hey Google, no, you don't have to go get one, because I think you'd have to plug it in and everything. But yeah. just, if you say, hey, Google, England just scored a goal, it would go, goal! Oh, really? Oh, it was awesome. Oh, good But I couldn't great. do it on Wednesday. I wanted to demonstrate it. And, it, and the Google Home said, I'm sorry, I, I can't. I don't. I just can't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just can't. Uh, it turns out it had an outage for a couple hours. And then yeah. Comcast. Now, this one's a little suspicious to me. Comcast says there's no connection. But not one, but two of its fiber mm -hmm. backhauls got cut. Uh, level power, three? Yeah, apparently power lines came down as well and, and added to the shenanigans. And uh, z uh, some other one that I hadn't heard of, like z Zara or something, something with a Z. Uh, they both went out and brought down Comcast's connection to the Zayo. Zayo! Zayo! <laughs> that affected the New York area. 
uh, AT and T and Verizon said eh, it didn't affect us. Yeah, and you know, with Comcast's reputation, many you know, it's, it's not like it's going to sink any lower. So Who you know, who knows? All right, in a minute, we're going to talk about this tiny PC that you should not drop on your foot. The <laughs> I'm telling you, it hurt. Very the, cool back case, though. The Ockle, which sounds like Ickle. I don't know what kind of name Ockle is. But yeah, it's a serious seat. And do you get why it's this is on the back? We'll tell you about that. But first, it's time for a word from my camera in my house, my lighthouse. I love my lighthouse. Let me show you. I can see. Oh, Lisa just got home, so my camera will be off now. That is, by the way, a really nice feature. Uh, I have a uh, the Lighthouse camera, which is the smartest home security camera mm -hmm. of all. It has a regular lens, it has night vision, but it has a third lens, a 3D sensing lens. It's time of flight LIDAR that allows it to image the room, to look at objects that are moving in the room, and determine whether it's a human, a child, or a pet. Oh. So you don't get a lot of notifications, but more than that, you can use AI to ask it questions like, let me know when the kids get home if, or let me, how about this one? This is a good one. Let me know if the kids don't get home by five o'clock. Right. Or let me know if you see the cat on any furniture. Actually, I don't think you can say furniture, but you can say, let me know if you yeah. see the cat. <laughs> things like that. It's awesome. Uh, so uh, one of the things I really like, and you'll see this, Lisa Laporte arriving home, that turns off the camera. Lisa wouldn't let me have a camera in the house if, <laughs> if it were on when, oh, wait a minute, it is on. Oh, I better turn it off just in case. That's my... Oh, I'm turning it on anyway. That's my office. Uh, maybe Lisa turned it on because she knew we were about to do the ad. So you, look at the kinds of things I can ask uh, the uh, lighthouse. I have... You see, I had it pointing towards the front door. I can ask it all kinds of questions. Have you seen any unknown faces today? Tell me if you see anyone new. When I tell it that, mm -hmm. I will get a notification on my phone. Hey, you... It's not you. It's not Lisa. Yeah. It's not the kids. There's someone new in the house. That's the kind of thing you want. That means those alerts are much more useful. Oh. You saw our uh, little pet over here, Penny. What did the dog do while I was gone? You can ask it that. What did the cat do between three and five yesterday? If it's a cat, probably just slept and licked <laughs> itself. <laughs> Ping me if you see the kids with the cat. Ping me if you don't see the cat by 10. This is awesome. You can actually see kids. You can talk to kids. There's a siren, so you can actually trigger an alarm if it's somebody in the house that you don't recognize. The, the lighthouse is amazing. Right now, through July 9th, you can get $100 off if you go to nice. www.light.house. 30 days worth of storage. Go back in time, ask it questions about what was going on. This is a really a remarkable tool. Light.house, but there's a special deal right now. You know, I know we've been talking about this for a while. It is absolutely the camera that I, it's the only one in my house. I really like this one. www.light.house, $100 off, but this is their 4th of July special only, or Canada Day, if mm. you will, only through July. <laughs> Ninth. It recognizes people. I can actually get pictures of people uh, that says, I don't know, here's a new face. Do you know who this person is? Why is this person in your house? Who is that? She looks like trouble. Actually, I know, <laughs> I know who that is. But <laughs> is, that, <laughs> I really love this thing. Light.house. I love it so much. We got two, and actually, I've given it to people who uh, are worried about their say, personal safety at home. Right. It is a really great tool. I can have all of these pings, unidentified faces, Lisa Laporte arriving. I, you know, I can see what's going on. Uh, really, really handy. Light.house for $100 off. But don't wait. It only is through July 9th. Thank uh, you and your so much. celebrations of kicking us out. It's just so <laughs> Ah, the 4th of July. It's such a joy. Do you guys, do you guys like to drape uh, your house in black and, and <laughs> mourn the loss of the colonies? I mean, what do you do on well, the Well, uh, our local sailing club that we teach at has, usually has a barbecue, so I put in a red jacket and go down there just to <laughs> the remind red them. The coats are it's just... Are you a citizen of the U.S. now? No, no, I'm I'm thinking about joining, joining up. You're a legal it's, resident. It, the th it would break my mother heart this is the thing but at the oh. same time you know it's it would be an awful lot easier you know <laughs> it's just well you live here your wife is american right i've just celebrated my 10-year anniversary in the u.s yes. wow it's you know, one of these days you should get rid of that English accent. It doesn't... <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never surrender. <laughs> so, oh, this would have been very valuable to the Redcoats. Uh, when it dropped on my foot, I realized this is a weapon. This is actually an interesting computer. It's the Ockel Sirius A. And the idea, well, there's a couple of ideas. Uh, they see this as a media playing device. You see it's a wedge, which means if you put it on your desk, you can kind of see the screen. It's actually quite a beautiful screen. Uh, I don't know if you can really tell at home. Running Windows 10. 
It's got an Ethernet port as well, which is fantastic. Yeah, isn't that cool? So I'll explain why it's got a full complement of ports. Type-C charging. It isn't a super fast processor. It's an Atom, but it's quad-core, the XZ processor running at 1.6 gigahertz. It can clock up to 2.56 if needed. Four gigs of DDR3 RAM. There's a Pro version. It's a little more expensive, 100, 100 euros more expensive. That has 8 gigs of RAM. Inside, I've got 64 gigs of storage. Although the Pro version, you could put 128 in. And it does have a micro SD card slot right on the side there. So you could mm -hmm. add more storage right there. I think they've got SD, micro SD cards up to 128. Yeah, and now. a fingerprint Maybe reader as well. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Um, that's the that's this button on the side here. Right well, like they that. keep on promise, promising us a, uh, a terabyte in, in, uh, in the micro SD sort of form. Isn't that amazing? If somebody's got an 8 terabyte uh, flash drive now, something it's like just that. Insane. 4 terabyte. So this is a 6 inch 1080p multi touch touch display. Uh, of course, it's using the built-in Iris gra or HD graphics from in Intel, the 405. Now, that's what's interesting on the back here, full ports. And you can see why they might have HDMI. So this would be a mm. media PC, for yeah. instance. Fanless design, so it's very quiet. You could put it behind the TV, and no one would know it's there. But because it's Windows 10, you could run full Plex. You could, you mm -hmm. know, do all sorts of things with it. It also has a full-size display port which I think is kind of interesting. That's for, And yeah. that's the secondary use for this. You could actually use it as your desktop PC. It's got two USB 3.1 ports, type, type A ports. Mm -hmm. So you could have a mouse, a keyboard, a monitor, and this would be your desktop computer that you could then just take with you. Uh, this is gigabit ethernet, so it's very fast. It does have a headphone jack. Uh, Dual band AC, Bluetooth 4.2. Now, the battery is a little anemic for a device of this size. It's about the uh, size of a typical Android battery, 3,500 mm -hmm. milliamp hours. They claim four hours battery life. Uh, Windows 10 is notoriously yeah. choose through battery life. So. You're not going to get four hours, maybe a couple of hours. But I think a lot of the uses for this are envisioned mm -hmm. as plugged in. Yeah. It does have, as you can see, a Canon power port, but you can also use USB C to charge it, and I think that's very nice. Uh, it does have ambient light, accelerometer, gyroscope, magnetometer, the kinds of things you'd expect in a smartphone, and even a five megapixel uh, camera, Skype-style camera. It's on the front, not the back. They should have built a SIM card slot into it. If you could actually use that as your phone as well, that you would know, be quite interesting. I, I really do think that's a more and more on portable devices. I have one of those always on ARM-based uh, Windows right. PCs, the yeah. HP NVX2, and I have the SIM card. And even though it's a slower machine, the great battery life on that mm -hmm. and the wireless connectivity anywhere I go make it the one that I reach for. Yeah. Less so something like this because it isn't connected unless you can get Wi-Fi. It also doesn't have great battery life. I do love the design. It comes in moon silver, meteor gray, and Venus gold, and that's the dog star. That's the Sirius constellation. Very Passive apt, cooling. Considering our current guest. <laughs> yeah, Canis Major. We have visitors from NASA today. Uh, so, this is the Sirius A. It's their third crowd-funded Indiegogo mini PC. It's good enough, the processor's fast enough, as you can see, to play Minecraft, mm. um, but probably not fast enough to play Fortnite, let's say. Uh, no, yeah. no, I wouldn't have thought so, not with an Atom. And I mean, do yeah. you really want to play Fortnite on a screen, <laughs> screen that side? I think it's interesting. In fact, I brought along with me, just to give you an idea of what's going on, uh, some similar products. So this one, uh, as as configured here is 700 euros which would be what um, about 850 dollars yeah, about that, like that yeah and that's Maybe quite a hefty price it's a lot to pay is. for this this thing uh is the gpd pocket also running windows 10 it's, it's exactly the same microprocessor this is a full keyboard and it's less expensive but it's really designed to be fully you know portable it doesn't have all the connectivity just a usb and a type c port uh Although that is, a, I think that's a mini display port on here. I like this. This keyboard mm. is almost usable. Yeah. And, and it has a little... Uh, it's got the nipple mouse. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this is an interesting product, and it's less. You know, it's about half the cost. Uh, and then as long as we're that talking... took me back. I isn't used to write fun? articles on, on for something very similar. The Scion 5, right? Yeah. And I had a 3A for years, which I love. Right. This, I've shown this before. This is the Planet Computer's Gemini. Also a, a little less expensive. Not as, as inexpensive as the Pocket, but I think about 100 euros less than the Ockle. And this also has a full keyboard. But this is running Android. And I think, and it can, it can they say, run Linux, although I haven't been able to put Linux on there. Oh, I'm so quite tempted yet. by that, just for the nostalgia cycle. Like and you know, if you, if you remember the Scion, you'll remember uh, the little toolbar it had mm -hmm. uh, down here, right? You can even bring that back. With, oh, with appropriate icons. 
in there. Uh, it kind of overlaps the end. That this is my Palm one. 3X with a portable keyboard. I wrote yeah. article after article on those. When they had... So this actually has a, a T-Mobile SIM in it, and yep. so it's always connected. It can take phone calls on it, and you can even take phone calls on it closed. They've got a little microphone oh. and the earpiece. So I think that this is an interesting category, and that's what made me think and about... Then, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, somebody, some wag. Somebody Alex in the office Gumpel has one of these. Brought Remember up that? A, brought up the, uh, the it's, kin. Remember that? It's, it's so sweet, but that, unfortunately the kids didn't like it. That phone had the lifespan of a Mayfly. Microsoft killed that, I think, in three months. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was... <laughs> it was a total flop. But, you know, when you take it out, it's kind of neat. I kind of yeah. wish... If it was if it was more than a single use device, I think it would have been a success. But it wasn't a full smartphone, and that was no. the limitation. No. So I mention all this. Uh, I, we're talking about the Aquil specifically, but I think for some reason this is a hot category right now. By the way, speaking of hot, it's getting kind of warm, and that's why you want the aluminum case. Ah, okay. It does generate a little bit of heat coming well, out of this. You see. This is being is being touted as sort of the next stage forward in that you get a small device that you can just plug stuff into and you can right. run Windows on it. Now, Microsoft tried that with the Windows phone system, and HP brought out a, a sort of atom-powered phones which you could then plug Samsung in. Samsung does as well, Yeah, right? But I haven't seen much take-up of them than within no. in the industry. You know, it's one of those things that sounds great when you're selling the device to the accounts department, but in actual practice, yeah, it's, you know, I, I, a bit iffy about it. But I do like the design. And having that level, I mean, compare the, the level of connectivity you've got in that to a MacBook Pro. You know, it's just bounds better. Sound quality is fairly good on this as well, given the size. You want to play a little Candy Crush saga? I've sure. never played Candy Crush. Okay, get ready. This is going to be your <laughs> first time. It is a very sickeningly, dare I say, sickeningly sweet game. Um, but you see, it's it's you know, it looks pretty good, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it's not, just, you don't sound impressed. Well, is it just like you've got to group the objects together, press and they... No, I'm talking about the computer, oh, not the, the game. Oh, right, I was going to say. No, 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 the actual computer itself. <laughs> yeah. My only negative on this is the price. That it, it is uh, a lot it, that of That does money. not include a keyboard. It, but if you could think of it as a media device, perhaps, yeah. uh, or a device that you might want to have as a kind of like a NUC a, a small computer that you use on the desktop and then pocket yeah. as you travel around. That's kind of how they're pitching the Oculus. You're Arco right. It is a very made. expensive bit of kit. And yeah. I think it needs the same card. It feels expensive. It feels oh, yes. expensive. I mean, the build quality feels yeah. good, and your yeah. toes obviously didn't really appreciate getting it. You know, it's oh, it really hurt. <laughs> I dropped it on. And by the way, it survived the fall, so that's also... Yes, that's also always encouraging. Uh, I, I'll be honest. Before you get any of these pocket devices, I would wait and see what Microsoft does. Paul Therott has been talking about this for some time. The rumors are surfacing. Microsoft's working on something called the Andromeda, mm -hmm. responding to this exact need that you just described. But what will be unique about the Andromeda will be about the size of a smart Smartphone, but when you open it up, the screen stretches across the hinge. So the full screen is mm. the size of a phone doubled, opened up. Yeah. And that, to me, is very interesting. We'll see what Microsoft does with this. Clearly, this is a category people feel has some legs. We've seen these for a long time. Remember the uh, Toshiba, Le what was it called? The, the libretto. The libretto, yeah. the libretto, right? The little computer. Yeah, you see, I mean, the twin screen thing is good on, on one level, but it does jack the cost up considerably because you've got to you know, run the same things and the, it hurts battery life. So I'm going to be very interested to see how this works because, you know, the Surface and the Surface Pro are, are pretty good tablets and uh, and laptops. So we'll see if they, can get, if they can get it right. That should be good. I almost feel like when I compare all of these that the, the, the pocket device that is running Android is the most suitable. Yeah. Because Android is designed for a screen that size. And, and so it low kind power of, and, yeah, yeah. And it kind of makes sense. So I don't know how desktop how well desktop operating systems will migrate uh, to this smaller form factor. I'm it, sure Microsoft would love them to, but I too am skeptical yeah. on this one. We'll watch with interest. That's a, a thumbnail look at the Ockel Sirius A. A heavy bit of kit at a heavy price, but pretty <laughs> All right, coming up in just a little bit, we've got a lot more on the new screensavers, including Jason Howell, who's going to review a whole bunch of Bluetooth earbuds in a vast price range, so you can see which one's right for you. But first, a word from our sponsor, WordPress. Now, I am a huge WordPress fan. I know a lot of people use WordPress. <laughs> Actually... More than a lot. 30% of every website in the world is running on Good WordPress, race. including a lot of the biggest publications in the mm -hmm. world. But for me, it's my 
platform. LeonLaporte.com, I run WordPress. I've been running it for a decade, and I recently moved to WordPress.com, and I really like it, because they do, they manage it all. They keep it up to date, they keep it secure. They've got the best support in the world, 24-7, Monday through Friday, and on weekends, too. I am a fan. WordPress also offers powerful e-commerce options. They've got anything from a simple, and by the way, very effective buy button, to a complete online store, as little as $4 a month. You know, I was really gratified. Both my kids recently came to me and said, I think I should have a website. I said, well, I have mm -hmm. Saving Your Name, which I got when you were born. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's so, a fantastic yeah. Birth gift. So I, yeah. yeah. So I said, we'll set this up. Abby's got hers at WordPress.com. Henry's going to be doing the same thing. And they love it. You will love it, too. And by the way, if you're a business and you want to expand your online reach, they make it easy. Built-in SEO, social sharing, so your customers share, spread the word about your business on their Facebook and, and, and Twitter accounts. Specialized plugins to meet your needs. I use the AMP plugin, which speeds up loading on Android. Of course, the Akismet is the best anti-spam anti comment uh, engine mm. ever. That's a fabulous one, unique to WordPress. Look, there's a reason 30% of all the websites in the world run on WordPress, including many of the sites that you visited all the time. Quartz, which yep. was hailed when it came out. It's one of the best-looking sites in the world. Yeah, they've been running right from the start on WordPress. On WordPress. If you can do it on Word, if you can do it on the web, you can do it with WordPress. Get started today. 15% off any new plan purchase. WordPress.com slash NSS. Create your beautiful website today wordpress.com slash nss and you will save 15 percent this code is right there on the website wordpress.com slash n s s jason howell he did a lot of work for this one he reviewed a bunch of bluetooth earbuds ranging in price from fifty dollars to three hundred twenty nine dollars three hundred twenty nine dollars here's for here's four of them for you right now one, two, three, four. Four wireless Bluetooth earphones, all in different price categories. I've been living with all these earphones for quite a while now, and today I'm going to compare them to each other and show you what to get for each of those price points. First, these are the Monoprice True Wireless Earphones. At $49.99, these little guys will get you nice and liberated from those wires on a budget. The True Wireless Earphones support Bluetooth 4.2, and they're stored in this compact little charging case here that feels eh, kind of flimsy, but as is the case with all of today's products, actually charges the wireless earphones while they're stored inside. So they're good to go the next time you want to use them. The case itself has a 500 milliamp hour battery with each earphone inside holding 50 milliamp hours each. That's around two to three hours of listen time. The earphones themselves are minimally designed. They're compact very light, and there are mechanical buttons on each one, allowing for control over smartphone player functions like pause, play, even taking a call. Fit-wise, they stayed in when they needed to and didn't pop out too far to make me look like an alien. Sound was, I'd say, passable, fine for dialogue-driven podcasts, but music sounds like it's being played through a cardboard box. Annoyingly, when placing them in the charger, the earphones stay connected to my phone. And that depletes the battery instead of turning them off automatically like the rest of the earphones in this showcase did. And the assistant's voice, by the way, is really unpleasant. Sorry, robot. I'm just not that into you. Next, the Jabra Elite 65T earphones at $169.99. These actually support Bluetooth 5.0, so they're up to date. Yet I still did, by the way, encounter just a few dropouts in my time. Not the flawless victory uh, of the Zolo Liberty Plus earphones, which you might remember I reviewed a few months back. I still haven't had a dropout on these things. From a comfort perspective, the Jabras are my favorite. I get an easy fit inside my ear each time. They don't pop out too far or look particularly goofy. There's actually a four microphone system that helps filter wind out of the signal when you're talking, which is really nice and super effective. I also use the hear through feature when using these while riding my bike around town. That allowed me to hear my environment mixed in with my podcast to keep me aware of my surroundings, and it worked great. They each carry enough battery for up to five hours of operation on a single charge, and the charging case adds another 10 hours of charge to the mix. 
Each earphone does have a mechanical button for control and assistant summoning, and those buttons aren't so stiff that it actually hurts the ear when you push them. And the sound is really nice on these. I enjoyed the audio quality for my music with these. Uh, they're my new favorites in this price range, slightly edging out the Zolo Liberty Plus. Then there's the just-released Sony Xperia Ear Duos, which... I would say, look unlike any earphone you've probably seen before. These run $279.99. They set themselves apart because of their open ear design. It's a little funky to fit into place, but once you tug your earlobe just right and get them sitting in there, the earphone channels music and calls into your ear while still letting 100% of the environment through, meaning you still hear the world as you are used to, only now you have a layer of music playing on top. I do wish they got a little bit louder and maybe sounded a little bit better, but this is a great solution for activities like maybe jogging at night or bike riding, where you actually want to listen to something but not be totally shut off from your surroundings. It comes with a very large caveat, the funky under ear hanging design that looks rather nerdy. The face of this is capacitive touch enabled for gesture controls, and each earphone has four hours of battery capacity with a fast charging case. USB-C is on board, uh, providing an additional three full recharges. And finally, for $329, the popular Broggy Dash Pro earphones. And when it comes to earphones with smarts, these reign supreme. Not only do you get top quality design that looks really nice in the ear, you also get deep AI integration that powers activity tracking features that kick in automatically when the onboard heart rate monitor detects that you're jogging, biking, or swimming. And yes, they are waterproof. All of that data can pass through to your favorite activity app so you can track them there. And iOS users have a neat live two-way translation feature that I hear is coming to Android soon. The Dash Pro has capacitive touch controls on both earphones, four gigs of internal storage for music storage, five hours of battery per earphone with an additional 30 hours of charge in the charging case. Now, I should note that on Android, I experienced dropouts from time to time, which was a bit of a buzzkill, but the sound in these suckers is something else. These are the earphones to select if you want your tunes to sound their best, and especially if you're a stud athlete. And there you have it, four earphones, four price points. May your mobile listening be forever wireless. I'm Jason Howell, and I talk all about Android and tech news weekly here on twit.tv. Thank you, Jason. That's a lot of money for a pair of headphones. I know. I have the Jabra Elites, which were $150, the sports ones. And th those are fine. And they don't fall out of my ear when I run, or mm. I, which I never do. But if I did, <laughs> I think in a way, a measure of your success in life is how little you have to run. The, the more successful you are, the less you have to run. That's going to be my excuse for right? sticking to it. Yeah, right? yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you're running, you, you're not doing well yet. Keep working on it. So these two... <laughs> These two look very similar, don't they? Well, one is an iPad and one is a Chromebook. This is the first Chromebook tablet, the Acer Chromebook Tab 10, exactly the same size, 9.7 inches as the iPad. It's a little higher resolution, 2046 by 1535, but the real difference is, of course, that the iPad is running iOS. This is running Chrome OS. Now, I, I, I would guess that you're a a happy Chrome OS user since you've got the original Pixel Book mm -hmm. uh, right there in front of you. Let me close a few. And of also them. with the later builds of Chrome OS, now that you can run Android apps in within Chrome I OS. I think that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Chrome OS is really becoming the operating system for education. And that's what mm. this Chrome tablet is aimed at. It's specifically for the K through 12 market. In fact, I don't know how we got one because you're not supposed to be able to buy it. <laughs> unless you're in education. They're going to end up charging $329 for this. Mm. Now, remember uh, that the Chromebooks go as low as 200 yeah. maybe even a little bit less, or as high as like your Pixel Book here is $1,000. Mm -hmm. But 329 is about right, I think. This is the same processor. Actually, I'm sorry, I'm confusing it. <laughs> the pencil is on the iPad. This is the <laughs> This is the same processor is in uh, Google's uh, Sam, it's a Google processor, design right. processor, uh, the OP1. It's a system on a chip from Rockchip. It's the same one as in the Chromebook Plus, which I thought mm. was pretty responsive. Yep. Felt pretty good. I liked it a lot. The build quality looks good. It feels nice and sturdy. It's a little thick, though. I mean, to compare it to it an is. iPad, this is a fairly... But, you know, it's for education. Let me give you some of the specs. Dual channel, 4 gigabytes, which is more than an iPad. 
uh, DDR3 RAM. The iPad is optimized, to be fair, for yeah. lower memory, yeah. and uh, iOS does a very good job with the, I think it's one gigabyte in the uh, iPad, maybe two in the newer ones. 32 gigs of eMMC storage. That's a lot for a Chromebook. And, of course, with the micro SD card slot, you can store more. But, really, Chromebooks have always been designed not to store stuff on board. No. Because you want to be able to power cloud, wash yeah. it. Yeah. And kids will be using Classroom. They'll be using Google uh, Google stuff, uh, the Google Drive uh, apps and so forth. How do I get out of... And admins, I mean, admins love these devices because they're so easy to oh, set up. Oh, they're great for a network. And get rid of, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. So I think this is kind of impressive. It does have a stylus. So you notice that the Apple Pencil is kind of a sit-on-top-of-pretty uh, elaborate, uh, expensive the device. The number of people I've met who have lost that pencil yeah, is just... Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. This one's built in. The stylus is built in. And uh, there are more and more stylus-focused apps. I think for a student, a stylus is important for yeah, taking certainly. notes, for drawing. Uh, any, the, the, uh, of course, you could add a third-party uh, Bluetooth keyboard, but this does not come with a keyboard. It has a 2-megapixel front camera. And what I like about this is it's got a rear camera, 5 megapixels. One of the things I see students do a lot with their iPads is make movies, take pictures. Right. And so the ability to do that on this is a really great thing. The uh, stylus is a Wacom EMR stylus, so it doesn't need a battery. It doesn't need to be charged. I don't know why signal keeps popping up there. Let's go back to uh, let's go back to See, Chrome. The only thing I think this is missing is a build is a keyboard. And, you know, a clip-on keyboard and or you, something along that something along those lines. Because you do need that, I think, if you're a school kid. It's an interesting uh, conundrum for school mm. because the iPad design for school. You know, this iPad has a hardware. It's not Bluetooth. It has a hardware connector. Yeah. The iPad design for schools doesn't have this smart connector. Okay. But because schools don't want kids using Bluetooth, especially in classrooms during testing, yes. they had to have a special system for connecting the keyboard on the iPad for school. I don't know if this has a special system hmm. for that. I presume that the way the Chromebook works is with they the Bluetooth the keyboard, yeah. and that's going to be an issue. So we'll have to investigate that a little bit more. Uh, USB 3.1C connector for charging and data and display. You can even run a display on it. It's got a regular headset jack and a micro SD card. Big battery, 8860 milliamp hours. That means, they say, about nine hours battery life. Yeah. Comparable, maybe a little bit less than an iPad. That'll get you through a school day. So what's interesting is you can now get an iPad for school mm -hmm. for less than $329, but it's roughly... Two ninety nine the education market, but it's roughly the same. Mm. I bet you can get discounts, similar discounts on this. We're gonna we want I want to know more about this, so we're gonna sign Jason Howell, our Android guy, and uh, a very good and tester, our Chrome guy, and a great tester as you just saw. We're gonna give this to him. This is the Acer Chromebook Tab Ten. I wanted to give you a first look at it. It's a nice screen. I think there's a lot to be said for it. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I want a tablet with my Chromebook. I want a good keyboard. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of kids might. You see, without a keyboard, a tablet is basically a consumption device. You need a keyboard if you're going right. to be creating stuff. And that's what I find interesting. This is clearly priced at, and aimed at the iPad. Yeah. And I don't know if Chrome OS really should be a tablet OS. I think it really should be uh, a, a, a laptop tricky one. OS, right? So Jason will have a review and let you know in a little bit more uh, detail. We just got this a couple of days ago. I just wanted to show it to you while we could. Um, this is the Acer Chromebook Tab 10 for education only. You ready for, uh, you want to answer a little uh, call for help question? Yeah, let's right. do this. Call for help. This is Joseph from Vancouver, Canada. Hi, Leo. Let me start by saying how much I enjoy the new screensavers. Yay. You and your guests have an entertaining way Canadian of presenting polite. technology yes. and that polite. makes it a lot of fun to watch. My question has to do with email clients. I use Microsoft Outlook for my business email accounts, and I use Windows Live Mail for my personal email accounts. That's worked great up to now, but when I purchased a new laptop last November, I discovered that Windows Live Mail is no longer available for download, so I've been searching for an alternative. The Windows Mail is too simplistic for my needs. I tried Thunderbird, but it would crash, and I didn't like the overall look and feel of the interface. I also tried EM Client, which appears to work well. It's free for up to two email accounts, and you have to pay if you have more. I was wondering if you know of a good email client that has a traditional interface with the folder views. And this way, when my message rules move email from the inbox to the folders, I can see those emails as they arrive. 
Any help that you have would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Hmm. What do you use for email? Gmail. And uh, you, you use the web interface of Gmail. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we use it for what for our work as well. Yeah. So, we do too. We use we're a Gmail house, a, a Google Drive or G Suite house. Yeah. Um, he wants a client. He wants a mm. desktop client, and there's a lot of reasons to want a desktop client. I'll tell you why I use a desktop client. I want to be able to store my mail locally, mm -hmm. I, offline if I need to, to be able to respond to and read email offline. And for me, oddly enough, the most important thing I want PGP signing and encryption. Right. And you can't do that on Gmail. You can install a Nig Mail. No, it's no, a little I mean, bit kludgy. Yeah. Um, so, first of all, I should say, Joseph, I understand what you want to do is have mm. a separate kind of email system for work at home. You can do that within Outlook. Yeah. You can create a profile for your home, a profile for work. You can have a and completely discreet yeah. email. You said you wanted your calendars, and the Outlook is going to do the best job with cal Outlook calendars. Mm -hmm. So, you may just want to stick with Outlook. Uh, he didn't like Thunderbird. There are a lot of email clients for Windows. I use Clause Mail, which I'm not sure okay. I would recommend. It's an open source email client, and it's got. If you didn't like how Thunderbird looked, you're gonna really not like Clause Mail because <laughs> it is it is very much an open source. But mm -hmm. I love it. It works on Windows, Mac, Linux. I okay. use it everywhere. It supports PGP very nicely. And remember there was this problem with PGP encryption, the e-fail problem, yes. where a mail client that was improperly configured could be used to read encrypted messages, and it had to do with HTML rendering. Clause mail doesn't do HTML email, and I like that. It means I'm not uh, going to have any so. problems with PGP, but I'm not going to get spammy, exactly. in yeah. invisible one-pixel links and all of that stuff. Now, have you tried Inky? Because I tried that out briefly uh, because I was sort of lured, I did. lured by the security side of it. But I, I like found, the octopus. I find they use the, the user interface just really started to get on my Yeah. It was just, you know, I wasn't quite sure whether I, I, it was just me or whether it was, you know, because it's got good security. It's got you know, it's, it's, it's hearts in the right place, but it just, the UI just didn't work for me. Well, and I think, in a way, Microsoft has killed the market for third-party email clients. Thunderbird is kind of in trouble. Yeah. Um, for years, I used Pegasus Mail. David Harris still updates this. It's quite good, but it's starting to look a little clunky. Eudora's gone. Yeah. I think a lot of the third-party email clients for Windows have disappeared just because everybody's got mail that comes with Windows. And if that's too simplistic for you, there's Outlook. Yeah. And truthfully, the, the really the third reason why you don't see as many clients anymore is most people are like you. They use a web interface to yeah. their email. This he wants to use filtering and stuff. And I, I, no, think no, I can understand that. I mean, the, it, it's, it's, the pro, it's the pro way to deal with it. But, you know, as you say, there's very little out there. And Outlook, it's clunky, it's kludgy, but you can configure it to do what you want, basically. Um, and the new Windows 10 mail client is, it's Windows 10, but you know, even so, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's not, that's the best thing you can say about it. It's not that bad. I agree. Yeah. It's a lot, I'm surprised, it's a lot like Live Mail or, out, or the old Outlook Express. Mm. Um, I, I have to say, I have looked at them all, I've used them all, I've bought them all, and I ended up using Clause Mail. I, it is because it's cross-platform. Uh, I like the security aspect of Clawsmail. You said you use filters. Clawsmail has amazing filters. Yeah. It also has one feature I really like, and you can get this to work in other mail clients, but no, never have I seen it work so well as in Clawsmail, mail templates. So you oh. can have an automatic reply template. You can have yeah. an automatic send template. It'll fill in information it knows about the recipient. So it'll, you know, if I'm writing an email to you, for instance, it'll say, Dear Ian. Comma. Is that and, different? Is that different from the suggested responses that you get with Gmail? Yeah, no, it's because I completely control it. It's a template, right? And so I always say cheers or thank you at the end. I have my email signature, and that saves me a lot of time. It actually pre—it's got kind of form letters yeah. for email, and it has a very extensive variable collection. So you can put a lot of stuff in that and auto merge it. Uh, I would okay. look. Uh, Clause Mail is not the most pretty, although you can customize fonts and kind of make it look better mm -hmm. but it is certainly a power tool yes and it is the it is the tool that i have ended up using again and having again and the again. ability to get that level of control which is what it sounds like uh, this is being called for by joseph i think that's that's probably a good a good one to check out so two answers joseph either continue to use outlook on your desktop and set it up with dual profiles that'll let you use everything you like about outlook at work mm -hmm. but you'll be able to use it for home and home mail and keep them separate 
Or if you want something really kind of more robust, more open source, I like Claws Mail. Yes. C and it's free. C L A W S dash mail uh, dot org. All right, there you go. There's a there's our best answer. Now next week, Alex Lindsay will uh, be on yes. the show. He's a guru in the Mac, and but also more importantly, maybe a guru in video production. Uh, so if you have questions for Alex, here's how you ask. Need tech help? The new screensavers are here with answers. Email your tech questions to newscreensavers at twit.tv. All right, it's brand new from Instagram. Facebook continues its power grab. <laughs> and they created a new app. Snapchat into a bloody puddle. Yes. <laughs> and I, that's what I think this is all about, and I'll explain my theory in just a second. But first, Megan Maroney with her review of the new IGTV. And now for another installation of I Review Apps so you don't have to waste your time. First, let's just get the important stuff out of the way. IGTV, the new app from Instagram, is not aimed at me. And if you are over 35 years old, it is not aimed at you either. It's aimed at the kids. And it's also aimed at killing Snapchat and YouTube. If you're looking for IGTV inside the Instagram app, you will find it, the little blinking TV in the top right. It's very hard to miss. You can also download the IGTV app separately on Android or iOS. If you, like me, have found that navigating Snapchat makes you feel like an old person, then you will recognize that same feeling in IGTV. The videos automatically play from one to the next, but chances are that you will not want to watch most of the garbage that is up there right now. For example, in just 15 minutes, I saw a bodybuilder doing a backflip, a couple taking a shower, and a woman I did not know and had never heard of explain why she and her husband had decided to adopt a child. I don't think Dan and I are actually going to try to have biological children. I think we're going to end up solely adopting. And, and all of that appeared on the channel that, labeled like for you. Instagram is owned by Facebook, and I know Facebook knows me better than that, so what gives? Under the popular tab, I found a woman unpacking her groceries from Trader Joe's, two iguanas fighting outside of a Starbucks in Boca Raton, and a video of someone squeezing those green things that people who garden use to absorb extra water in their house plants. I did try to Google this to find out what the name of these things are, but I could not find it. But that is not the point. The point is you will want to skip through some stuff. To do that, just swipe left. To go back, swipe right. Tap to get the controls to pause the video or to grab the scrubber at the bottom to skip ahead or back to an exact point in the video. This is also where you can find the browse button to go back and find other content. You can search under the aforementioned for you tab, which as I said, did not seem to be for me yet. There's also a tab for people you're following and a popular tab. Right now you can also search for creators, but you cannot yet search for topics. Like the main Instagram app, you can like, comment, or send a video in a direct message. Unlike Instagram, comments and likes are not the main focus here, which I suppose is good for taming our narcissistic society. If you are any kind of creator, from Oprah to the guy dressed in a Spider-Man costume dancing to AHA in line at the drugstore, you will probably want to figure out how to post your content on IGTV. Even if it's not the place where you plan to consume content or the place where you would like your viewers to consume your content. You can complain about the fact that IGTV only uses vertical video or that it is exhausting to create content for another platform. But whether you are just starting out or you you are already successful, you have a lot of competition for people's eyeballs. And if you want fans to get their eyeballs on your content, you ought to meet them where those eyeballs are. Even if you have long form content that works better on a TV, you might find a fan through IGTV who will fall in love with your content and then watch you on your preferred platform. If you still find vertical video abominable, then move along. But if you can evolve like the rest of us, then let's get started. Unless you have a verified account, your videos must be between 15 seconds and 10 minutes long. Larger accounts can upload up to 60 minutes of video and you have to upload that from a computer. You can create your channel within the app or from the web at Instagram.com. Just select create channel and then follow the on-screen instructions. If anyone comments on your content, you can see those comments in the regular Instagram app in the same place where you see your regular Instagram comments. 
I want to thank Wade, an artist and tech nerd who commented on my IGTV post to explain how useful IGTV can be to creators, even if you hated the idea at first. I am Megan Maroney, and I host Tech News Weekly every Thursday and iOS Today every Tuesday. And coming up very soon, I will be hosting Know How IoT with Florence Ion, and that will be on Thursdays. Thank you, Megan. You didn't even know about IGTV too. No, I'm not down with the kids in the world. How could you? you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I have really mixed feelings about it because I, you know, I don't know exactly, but it's clear what Facebook's up to. They, yeah. If if if, if Facebook doesn't appeal to young people in America, it does around the rest of the world. But in America, then they're going to put. In, they're going to buy Instagram, put Instagram. And then yeah. if Snapchat starts to pull away young people, then they're going to make Instagram look more like Snapchat. Which they've been doing for the last couple of years. Yep. I mean, it's it, it's been pretty blatant at that point. My first thought is that IGTV might be aimed at YouTube, which young people mm. in America consume in preference, frankly, to regular television. And maybe it is. I, I, I think that Facebook doesn't care. They're just going to put stuff out there, yeah. see what happens. Throw it against the wall, see if it sticks, and then, yeah. 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 It's, I mean, it's an interesting concept in its way, but it's, it's like, great, another video app, woohoo, you know, yeah. it's... I don't like the autoplay feature. The minute you no. open it, it's going, and it's playing, and it is playing uh, that For You tab, which doesn't seem to be for me or anybody I know. Uh, you saw what it would play for uh, Megan. I don't know, maybe in time it'll get more uh, accustomed to what yeah. I know. Yeah, I mean, I'm also going to be curious to see how this is abused, because I can see, I mean, if they've got, unless they've got actual content monitoring, there's some, you know, stuff, people oh, they do. anything up there. This is where Instagram has done very well, right? right? You can't show a nipple on Instagram, even if it's a man's nipple, without <laughs> somebody complaining and it being taken down right away. So right. they have a very active community moderation on Instagram, and that will apply on okay, GTV good. as well. So I don't think you have to worry about that. On the other hand, I do think, this is my theory, brands are going to flock to IGTV with its autoplay video. It's going to be a great place for advertising. We've already put a bunch of stuff. Did we get good engagement? A couple of things. I don't know if we got good engagement or not. It's a little this weird because we shoot our stuff in in the landscape mode, As it should like be done. normal TV, yes. <laughs> and everything on an IGTV is in vertical the, the yeah, portrait which mode. just looks horrible. That's well, nice. remember, it's designed for people watching on their phones. It doesn't look yeah. horrible on your phone. It's the natural aspect ratio of your phone. The problem is our lower thirds got cut off on the side. Everything, we're going to have to start centering everything in the middle. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that Because right now, for instance, if we put this on IGTV, you wouldn't see me, you wouldn't see Ian, you just see this TV screen in the middle. So, Ian, just move a little closer. Well, there we go. Hi. <laughs> There you go. See? Yeah, Perfect that for kind IGTV. Of, it kind of limits. This is yeah, what no, you get if you watch it right now. <laughs> not, that is not compelling TV. So uh, thank you, Alex, for helping me uh, demonstrate, <laughs> demonstrate that. Brands will like it. And I think the real secret reason for all of this, Instagram we, we definitely wants to kill Snapchat. And, yes. And they've decided there's no way to get young people to give up Snapchat. Young people like the privacy, the fact that it disappears, mm -hmm. that no one else sees it. It's not public when you're messaging on Snapchat. Exactly. And, Insta and, of course, Facebook and Instagram don't and can't compete with that. However, the thing that keeps Snap alive is the brands who are advertising on Snapchat. Exactly. If you can yeah. get those brands to move to IGTV, bye-bye, Snap. They've lost then yet another of their already poor, you know, tiny revenue streams. Precisely. So it's, yeah. So I think it's actually not aimed at you and me. It, or at the youngins. It's aimed at the brand. Facebook is desperate to kill off Snapchat. I mean, it, it's, I mean, it's it as a major weakness that they couldn't buy like the same way that... I mean, do you remember when they bought when Facebook bought Instagram and we were like, a billion dollars for Instagram? What were they thinking? And then now it's just like, this is a, easily a hundred billion dollar company. That, I just saw I just saw the, the valuation. valuation. Yeah. A hun that's hundred a, billion. That's a hundred times in a yeah. couple of years, right? Turns out to be a good investment. We'll see what, how it happens with WhatsApp. That Mark Zuckerberg does what he's doing, doesn't he? And who knew that this would actually... They tried to buy Snapchat, couldn't. But yeah. this may actually put it to rest. Time for the mailbag! And our friend from NASA who's visiting us today. Oh, and look just for you. This I thought you could wear this during the uh, England match, <sighs> england Columbia. Why is it every time I come up here I get to wear a ridiculous hat? <laughs> Oh, it looks so good on you. As deer stalker, this is a deer stalker, yes. Yeah, so, it's a um, Sherlock Holmes hat. Yes. Yeah. Elementary, my dear Watson. What is it they <laughs> chant at English uh, football matches? Uh, some of it's probably not repeatable on TV. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I ask, look like ask. Andy Cap. Remember Andy yeah. Cap? Oh, the lovable <laughs> wife-beating racist. Yes. It was a cartoon. Yeah, okay. I know, I know, but <laughs> this is an Andy Cap cap. 
Uh, pick an email. Anyway. Uh, okay. Oh, sure. Yeah, he needs a pipe. Let's get him a pipe. And I, I don't look like Watson. I don't know who I look like. You've got the first one. Go ahead and start. Oh, okay, right. Uh, right, okay. Uh, I fear for my security with the recent router <laughs> attacks and vulnerabilities in the news. I'm a... <laughs> That's a vuvu... <laughs> Go England. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Quite frankly, after the South African experience, anybody that brings out a vuvuzela in the English crowd gets it inserted. So yeah, really? It's... Oh. That sounds painful. Um, I hope it's the thin end anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> I fear for my security with the recent router attacks and vulnerabilities in the news. I'm a Frontier customer, my apologies, and our antivirus software is a vast has been reporting that my router firmware is way out of date and has another vulnerability. It's made by Netgear and issued to Frontier customers. <laughs> yes. Neither company wants to do anything no. about outdated firmware. They're Kel Surprise on that one. Uh, is this matter urgent enough to change ISPs or is there something else I can do to secure my network? Well, um, I don't honestly think you need to change ISPs. There's a couple of things you should be doing. First off, examine if you can manually update the firmware yourself because router companies have got a lot, lot better about releasing patches and fixing these kind of problems. But I'd be, I don't know about you, Leo, but I'd be tempted in this case just to, what the hell, it's time to upgrade my router. Yeah, I mean, most of the time what happens is these cable companies, because they want to control mm. not merely the fact that you're using them, but they want to control your in-house network. So they issue you a cable modem, which you have to have, yeah. to interpret what's coming in from the cable and turn it into Ethernet. And they usually bundle that into a router. Oh, yeah. And the, uh, He calls it a router, but it's really a router. It's but, our <laughs> language, we'll say how it... <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started on Andy the young man. Just... It means something completely different in Australia. I just... <laughs> so, so uh, as does Fanny Pack, but that's another story for Well, me. yes. Uh, so what you would like to do is disable the router router yeah. and use the cable modem, which you have to use. In some cases, and I bet you Frontier is one of these cases, mm. certainly Cox and Comcast will let you do this, you can order your own... Cable me do that. As long as it goes with certain protocols are covered by, by the hardware, then you can run it, you know, run whatever you like. Yeah. So that's probably the best bet. You want a more modern router. You want a more modern cable modem. You should look on the Frontier website to see if they allow third-party cable modems. If yeah. they do, get one that they say they support, at least Doxis 3. That's the latest protocol. Doxis yes. 3.1 is coming soon. So if you have, there are many 3.1 routers out there. Go to thewirecutter.com and see what they recommend. Ironically, they recommend, I think, a, a Netgear cable modem. Yeah. I mean, that can make good, good reliable yeah. stuff. And they get more a more modern router, yeah. which you can keep up to date, and which they don't control. I'll tell you one of the problems, I think, with letting the cable company mm. uh, deliver your router. If you're an Xfinity customer, a Comcast customer, the router that uh, Comcast bundles will, unless you turn it off and you have to know where and how to turn it off, set up an open Wi-Fi access point called Xfinity yep. for your neighbors to use on your router. Yeah. Now they say, well, it doesn't count against your bandwidth, but, uh, but it's still taking... It's, it's taking, using your bandwidth. Yeah. It, it's, it's a monstrous system. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, it's because Comcast has uh, visions of becoming a cell provider. Yes, exactly. And ultimately they're going to set up these Xfinity routers to provide cell service. In fact, I think they already do. Yes, they do. Uh, uh, in uh, effect, cell service mm. all, all over. And so if they can blanket your area with Comcast routers, which they've yeah. done here in Petaluma, they've done in San Francisco, mm -hmm. um, then they're halfway to having their own phone network. It's a scummy business practice, but we are talking Comcast. Yeah, right. So, you know, I don't think Frontier is much better. Mm. If they let you use your own cable modem, go ahead and do that. Yeah. If they don't, then disable the router in your Netgear modem mm -hmm. router and use your own router. And you can often do that. Uh, worst case scenario, it's not the ideal. If you can't disable the routing in your in your provided cable company provided router, you can at least put another router on. I use an Eero, yeah. for instance, and uh, let it do all the work, and it will become another barrier between you yeah. and the outside world. You may have, I mean, Netgear's routers are susceptible to the VPN filter, yes. and because it's not updated, that means you're potentially wide open to the VPN filter malware, which is on at least half a million routers out there. Well, we're also seeing malware writers actively targeting routers now because no, on the home front, it's not as important. But for businesses, if you can actually get malware onto the router itself, who is about the only person who's going to go onto that router? It's the IT admin. And if you manage to hone oh, the wow. IT admin, 
that's it, game over. Oh, I never thought of that. Yeah, there's, there was some really interesting research wow. from Kaspersky earlier in the year where they, they found malware that was specifically going after routers just to go after the IT admins. It was, it's a sneaky bit of code. Yeah. In general, the modem and router you get from your cable company will be out of date. They're renting it mm -hmm. to you, often at a great cost. Comcast charges, I think, $10 a month. It's shameless. It's really shameless. It just, you know, the idea that you won't be able to, that you've got to rent you know, the modem and router, it's just like, just let us buy it. I like know the old days of the phone company, you had to rent a phone, remember yeah. that? Maybe you don't remember that. No, no, in, in the UK it was the same. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, get a router router. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call cable modems? Cable modems. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, get a K. Well, we don't, a we don't have an awful lot of cable in the UK as well, so. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's around, it's spreading, but... The bulk of internet access comes through DSL lines that were adapted from the original copper pots, uh, copper pots lines. That's a that's a strong disadvantage. It's not very fast. It is. So now that's why cable is getting more and more popular yeah. in the UK now. And there's also a lot of fiber build out. Well, that's the thing is you could just jump uh, leapfrog over cable and go go straight to. Uh, yeah, exactly. Fiber. And that's yeah. the logical step. Question two. Hello, new screensavers. <laughs> Hello. I will be getting a new cell phone in a few months. Ah. And I, <laughs> I love a, don't you love a Vuvuzela? Uh, for about five minutes, and then it gets <laughs> in the match. Do you remember gets... that people actually wrote Vuvuzela filters so that you could put it on, and it would filter out the Vuvuzela oh, sound from those games? Grief. Yeah, I, I, can I, believe, I can believe it, because they got really <laughs> annoying in South Africa. This was from South Africa. Somebody brought it to me after the World Cup. Oh, fantastic. Years ago. Yeah. That's a piece of history. Yeah. I'll be getting... <laughs> That's what some people call it. I'll be getting a new <laughs> cell phone in a few months, and I want the most secure smartphone you can buy. The most secure, what do you recommend? So on Friday last week, mm -hmm. I interviewed Phil Zimmerman, the creator right. of PGP, PGP. Mm -hmm. and Silent Circle, which yeah. created the black phone. Now, this was designed to be the most secure cell phone ever. They stopped making it, and I asked Phil about it, and he said, well, it turned out we really didn't understand the cell phone business at all. Mm. And to make money in the cell phone business, you've got to sell a lot of cell phones and yeah. you generally have to go through a carrier. And we just weren't able to make that a business. Mm. So we stopped making it. Uh, there are open source phones. There's a Librem phone. Yep. And there's the Copperhead. Is it the Copperhead operating system that's been locked down? Although well, that's gone into some, in, into some problems. The problem is, I mean, if you want a, a, a phone designed specifically for security, you can buy, I mean, you know about the Boeing Black, I think it is, where it's actually booby-trapped the case. So if you try and open the case, right. the phone automatically deletes itself. Um, Black phone was great. I loved Silence, what Silent Circle did then. I was thinking about maybe things like the, Black, the BlackBerry D-Tech line. Uh, let me tell you what Phil said. Because mm. I said, well, what do you use if, you're not, if you don't? He said they use an iPhone. He yeah. said... Really, uh, for one thing, there is an advantage to using a weird off-brand phone like mm -hmm. that Boeing phone because there's fewer people to use it. There's less attack surface. You know, everybody, every hacker in the world's going after the iPhone, mm -hmm. right? It's just that the, the with the secure enclave and with Apple's attention to security, he feels safest yeah. using an iPhone. He said, "I would never use an Android device of any kind." Dan Kaminsky, the the guy that, that saved that saved us all with, D, with DNS, is, he's he's in complete agreement. He yeah. also says use an iPhone. My one problem is that you've then got you don't have to, but if you're going to get the full benefit of it, you've got to buy into the whole Apple ecosystem. And That's if you're right. on an Android phone, if you're going Apple's, with an Android Apple's phone, Apple's no dummy. Yeah, but if you aren't going to go with an Android phone, I would say go for the Pixel Two. Oh, I do like the you Pixel get too. you get your security updates ahead of everybody else. It is actually pretty good security in there for what it is. The key thing with Android is to watch out for the apps. Yeah. You know, the apps are what kills you with Android. As far yeah, as I, I don't see. feel like I'm unsafe using Android. On the other mm. hand, no one who goes to DEF CON carries an Android phone, right? <laughs> the big hacker I, I did take one last year did with you? the hopes of it getting hacked. And did it? Uh, you no. might have been on a Stingray and not known it. Well, that's true, and I wouldn't surprise me if there's going to be stingrays. Those are the there. fake cell sites. Yeah, which up. are the harvesting sites. But no, no, I took a phone and I left it on, and I left all the security pointers off. There was one bit of slightly odd activity, and then about two days later, it started to go really haywire. Oh! And it was like, right, okay, factory you reset. You did get hacked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about getting a cheap Windows PC and just you know, leaving it open and seeing what happens. I think you're safe on your Chromebook if you go to DEF CON. That's why I take the Chromebook to yeah. DEF CON, because yeah. it, it's very, very hard to hack. 
um, and it's got my stickers on it. So the problem using a, a kind of off-brand phone like the Librem or the phones we mentioned yeah. is it's a small market. These guys, we don't know how long they're going to stay in business. Are they going to keep it up to date? Are they going to do the yeah. patches? And and I just I feel like you're, even though you're on a a popular phone, which means it's a very popular place to try to hack. Apple's done the right thing. I would say use yeah. an iPhone. The other thing, you might mention the Samsung Knox phones as well, because Samsung yeah. has that Knox secure enclave. Uh, Phil said, you know, I see some people doing that kind of thing, but he uses an iPhone. And I know somebody who swears by his Phantom, but they've now gone out of business because they were found out to be selling those, There's to, the problem. Selling those to drug dealers. There's is, the problem. Right, yeah. yeah. yeah Purism makes that Librem phone I was talking about. Yeah. Right? That's why I, we should get one of those. In we, and I, check think, it out. I keep on hearing about the Karim phone that's coming out, but that this is apparently an ultra secure phone. But as, yet, as far as I know, it isn't yet out on the market. They're still talking about it. Um, I mean, BlackBerry have traditionally had okay security, but their management has... Yeah, but they sold the source code for the Black... Sold, gave yeah. the source code for BlackBerry's enterprise server to China, to Russia, There's to anybody who asked them. Yeah. I know, there's the They rub. don't use it anymore, but still, I don't know. If no, I, 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 I got the feeling that BlackBerry would roll over and do whatever a government tells it well, to do. And so. the truth is, so would Apple. If I were in China right now, I wouldn't use an iPhone. But either. it's interesting. Apple is now building in functions like, you know, the sort of the one-hour you know, one, one hour window you've got with a new operating system, which are designed to thwart right. an awful lot of this kind of stuff. They're not giving up on this. And I think because they've seen people like, want secure phones. Can they we are, be honest? If you want to be secure, you shouldn't be carrying a freaking cell phone. <laughs> it's got a GPS. It's got a microphone. It's got a camera. Yeah. It's connected to an always-on network, mm -hmm. which has, if it's in the United States, almost certainly been suborned by a three-letter agency. Yeah. This is not a secure device in any sense of the word. And you, if we do, I mean, you also, when you get a new phone, you've got to spend so long, you've got to spend a lot of time locking it down because the default settings are wide open. Yeah. You know, it's, um, it's, it's just not good. I think we should, just, we should just live in, uh, in fear. Go back to the old times. days where you carried around a pocket full of change just in case you needed to I make a phone figure, call. Go ahead, spy on me. What I, I didn't tell you about the, the P20, the... Uh, the phone I got, uh, the Chinese phone I got, because I was very curious if P20 oh, would right. like a camera. I've been talking about it on the air. Mm. It's, a, it's a Xiaomi phone. And oh. uh, so the first thing, <laughs> I turn it on. I mentioned this last week. The first thing it does is it says, would you like local weather? Yeah. Okay, well, what's your IMEI number and your MAC address? Oh, good grief. What? Yeah. And then I noticed the last security update, it's an Android device, the last security update it got was last year. Mm. So maybe not the safest phone to use. No, I mean, the this is the problem, the major problem with Android and where Apple really wins out on the security front. Keeping it up to is, date. Yeah, keeping it up to date. Yep. The bulk of Apple users are up to date on their patches. The vast majority of Android users aren't because the manufacturers or the networks don't push them out quick enough, which is why if you're going to go Android, go the Pixel route. This is a great man. This, this <laughs> oh, man, this nice. is a great man. This is a man <laughs> who writes about security and all sorts of wonderful things at the register.co.uk. I look for your byline. Less of it now that you're an editor. Uh, yeah, charge. yeah. I mean, I did the whole in Alison Obits and then the inside scoop on Brian Krasnich uh, leaving Intel. Uh, oh. Because I was speaking to some people at Intel and they're like, there is no way he's resigning over, say, over, a, over a relationship. Uh, a relationship that ended three years ago? Yeah. That wasn't even uh, when he was CEO? Mm. Um, he's resigning because Intel's in Intel's the pot. Intel's it. Yeah, exactly. That's why They're a one-trick pony that's yeah, going, yeah. going down. But yeah. um, oh, some of this, I mean, we couldn't print some of the stuff they, talk, cause they, they oh, told really? us about him. But, um, oh, certainly can you tell me later? I can drop it, yeah, once we, once we disconnect the mics and then, you know, the camera's oh, up. Stay tuned, folks. I'm going to pretend the stream is over and, <laughs> and get the scoop from Ian. We do the screensavers, the new screensavers, every Saturday afternoon, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 2200 UTC. Please come by and watch. In fact, if you want to be in the studio, you could bring your pet. No uh, peacocks allowed. But, <laughs> but you certainly can bring... Oh, oh, there's a sweet doggy. Just email tickets at twit.tv. And, and if you're bringing a dog, let us know. We'll, put a, we'll have a little bowl of water out there uh, for, for him. Uh, if you can't watch live uh, on our stream at twit.tv slash live, you can always download on-demand audio and video of everything we do at our website, twit.tv, in the case of this one. And transcripts in some cases. NSS. Yes, uh, Steve Gibson, we do a very nice transcript 
of, uh, of the Security Now show. Thanks to Steve. Um, you can also uh, subscribe in your favorite podcast app, and that way you'll get it every week. Thank you. For and you have the here. newsletter as well. <laughs> You've been here a few too many times now. You actually know the <laughs> spiel. <laughs> subscribe to the newsletter, twit.tv slash newsletter. <laughs> And these hats are not for sale, but others are at our store, twit.tv slash store. The merch. We call it the merch. Yeah, we did it for a while as well, but it just got too much hassle in the end. And it, uh, it stepped on your... <laughs> <laughs> oh! uh, not stepped on, got what's, on. The got, phrase is got on my... Got on your... I wasn't sure about that one, whether or not you had to bleep that out. Oh, I'm sure we did. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> we'll see you next time on the new screen savers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>